Hello everyone and welcome to another Science and Spirituality. This week we have a, a very fascinating research topic. I had happened upon a research paper that uh, discussed the DNA, our DNA, and the idea that there is a second layer of information on the top of our genetic code. Now, the dictionary definition of DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, is a self-replicating material present in all living organisms as the main constituent of chromosomes. It is the carrier of genetic information. So DNA is what gives us the fundamental and the distinctive biological characteristics or qualities of the human body. Now, a person's DNA is something that is regarded as unchangeable. Now, there is a gene editing technology called CRISPR that may be used to modify a person's DNA, but it is risky and dangerous to do as our understanding of our genetic code is still within its infancy. Now, the information in DNA is stored as a code that is made up of four chemical bases, adenine, gu guanine, uh, cytosine and thiamine. Okay, so it's A, G, C, T. When, when looking at data relating to our genetic code, you see these four letters, A, G, C, and T, that go up the DNA double helix, you know, coil, and that define how to, <clears throat> how to, um, how the DNA functions or what it's, what it's trying to define programmatically. Okay, so, Human DNA consists of approximately 3 billion bases, and more than 99% of those bases are, the, are identical, they're the same in all people. The information contained within DNA, the ordering of the bases, de determines the information available for building and maintaining an organism for producing proteins, which are very complex molecules that do most of the work in our bodies. The coding sequences are what determine the type of protein to be produced in a certain cell. And note that there are many types of cells in our bodies which have various functions to make our, that, that make our bodies work. And so recently I had found a paper, this is, the paper is a couple years old, back in 2016, but it, it is titled Multiplexing Genetic and Nucleosome Positioning Codes. Okay, it's a computational approach. And so the researchers in this, this paper had hypothesized that the mechanical properties of the DNA act as a second layer of information. Now, this mechanical properties of DNA refers to how DNA encodes its molecular structure and sequence, you know, particularly the weaknesses of the hydrogen bonds and the electronic interactions that hold the strands of the DNA together compared to the strengths of the bonds within each strand. These things are related to the formation of proteins and protein folding. Okay, so the protein folding is the physical process by which a protein chain acquires its unique three-dimensional structure, a, form, uh, a conformation that is biological, biologically functional, as in other words, it's gene expressive. So folding is the physical process by which a polypeptide folds into its characteristic and functional three-dimensional structure from a random coil. So it's this folding mechanism of DNA that is believed to play a key role in how genes are read by a cell. Researchers are working on isolating and trying to understand the mechanical properties, uh, the mechanical folding mechanisms that determine how DNA is is folding, you know, how, how this is occurring. So theoretical physicists in the Netherlands have used computational chemistry, and the model they used was a computational nucleosome model, to simulate the protein folding to study the mechanism for folding that is encoded into our DNA. Now in the paper, the research group simulated the folding of DNA with randomly assigned cues using baker's yeast and fission yeast as a model species. The simulations were designed to study the mechanism and the folding structures of DNA in these two organisms. And what, what was important to, to note is that 
when we look at the code that is in the DNA that was designed to to uh, cause the, the creation of a particular protein for a particular cell, what what researchers have over the in history in the past have, have noticed was that they there there were slight variations in the sequencing and yet the same protein would would come out and they classically it had been interpreted that the this was a way for uh for a redundancy a check that in the sense that there could be slight mutations but yet the dna comes out exactly like it should historically this is how it has been taught in the classroom but what we are learning here is that the actual sequencing is related to the protein folding mechanism and the protein folding is very important when it comes to gene expression and its particular function within the cell so what these researchers have done is that they they took and they they took this computational model and they they assigned cues to these yeast structures in order to simulate and to see what what is happening with these different um these different cues which then cause the dna to fold into different structures okay and so what what they have concluded from this research was that there is a second layer of information in our dna that guides the specific folding mechanism and this is very significant as this study is that this that what we learn is that with genetic mutations are not just caused by a change in the sequence of the codes but also by the change in the way in which the strands of the protein strands are folded and this this opens up a whole new area of research not just complicating the process for research and development within a multi-layered biological program but that it will help it would be helpful in finding unwanted sequences like those that cause diseases so the, these results may lead to a greater understanding of disease pathology okay so what this is i thought this was just fantastic research this shows a multi-layered program okay within our dna and that it not just codes for the production of the of the protein but also codes for on on a secondary layer codes for the the specific folding of the protein for its task and if there are mutations in that that second layer code then the proteins may become uh, a pathway for cancer or you know some other disease and so what what this reveals to us you know in related to the the spiritual aspect of the scientific research is that what this reveals is reveals to us is as we continue to unravel the mysteries of the genome the underlying complexity directs our attention to a creator who has embedded an incredible multifaceted code right into our genes and the concept here is that of a hidden code within the genes that our genes that has a very practical function and purpose in our cells gene expression right the, if the protein isn't folded right or correctly it it won't turn on or off genes that that it's needed to do you know then you get some kind of disease or some kind of um you know problem in the body and this is something very similar to someone writing something in english the english language and then pulling out every fifth letter and producing a meaning that is completely different in the hebrew language you know i thought that was a great example the base sequences have a multi-purpose or dual usage in the combination of the letters that ultimately form the complete set of instructions for making proteins including how they fold so the hidden code or the multi-use nature of DNA reminds us of the Hebrew language. And this is this is what is so fascinating. And in that many words in the Hebrew language have a dual meaning. You know, take for example the word kavod it has a meaning of both weight or glory depending upon its context. Another example may be found in the word devar, having the meaning of word or thing depending upon its context. Another example may be found in the word basar in if the word flesh in the example i gave here in the study is from exodus 12 verse 8 and isaiah 61 verse 1 in exodus 12 verse 8 it says they shall eat 
the flesh, it says habasar, that same night roasted with fire and they shall eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. So what we find here is the Pesach, the Passover lamb. And they are to roast it and eat it all up. You know, that, that very same night and don't leave any left over, okay? And then with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. So the word here, basar, is in reference to the flesh. In Isaiah 61, verse 1, it's, it says, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives, and freedom to the prisoners. Okay, so in the same word that's used here is basar. Okay, and if... If we, we compare these passages, if we neglect the Nikud vowels, okay, the Nikud vowels, we find the very same spelling, basar, in each of these passages. In Exodus 12, verse 8, basar means the flesh of the lamb. In Isaiah 61, verse 1, the word means the gospel message of the good news. So what we find here is this multifaceted usage of the, the Hebrew word for basar, for flesh. And the interesting concept that is being taught here from when we look at the scientific research versus our, our Hebrew learning is that this teaches us of the, the concept of a hidden meaning within the text. And that, that's exactly what the researchers are finding in the, our DNA, in the genes, that in the sense that um, there is a hidden code that is directly and practically applied to protein folding. What we find here in the Hebrew text is that there is a interesting multifaceted use for the Hebrew words. At the word level, the peshat, the simple understanding, the straightforward understanding, we understand the simple meaning based upon the context. At a higher level, at the remez, the drash, and the sod, one may parallel these passages to the Messiah as the Lamb of God, the suffering servant, and the teachings and the interpretations that we find in the apostolic writings. In these underlying hidden messages in the scriptures that reveal to us the ultimate plan of God, just as we find in the scientific research of the multi-used DNA providing a second level of programming for proper protein production, which is showing us that there is a creator God. What we're finding here also in just in this, the the study of the Hebrew scriptures, is that there is a creator God. There is a second level. There is this matter of um, uh, a deeper meaning of the text. There's always more to the story in matters of science and spirituality than meets the eye. I think this is what this teaches us. And this is why the rabbis employed the exegetical technique known as parodies. This scientific research on the hidden layer of programming reminds us of the fourfold levels of interpretation of scripture. The Peshat, the Remez, Drash, and Sod. Each type of parodies interpretation examines the extended meaning of the text. And as a general rule, the extended meaning never contradicts the base meaning. And when it comes to the messianic interpretations or the, the future expectations of the Messiah based upon the text, both the mystical and the rational religious Judaism entered into this exegetical technique in, in the sense of uh, the studying of God's word and in the meaning, the, a secondary layer, a secondary level of the meaning of the text. Okay, And so the significance of these things may be illustrated by the example that there is not a single direct mention of, in quotes, the Messiah, you know, the, the great Messiah, in the literal words of the Tanakh. All of the prophetic meaning related to the concept of a future Messiah is from Agata, from Midrash, and non-binding oral Torah. So between Talmud, Midrash and the Zohar, there are hundreds of direct descriptions of the Messiah discussing his attributes, his authority, and his function. And the point is, you know, what we can what we can draw out of this is that what we believe in regards to Scripture and what we say concerning the Messiah, we naturally draw out, we draw upon a rich Jewish tradition and background that describes who he is and what he will do. And when looking at a, at this from a mystical and esoteric view, you know, the sowed. These interpretations take a conceptual context from the Peshat, the Ramez, and the Drash. The rabbinical method 
differentiates between explicit and the hidden meanings from the text as this is related to the Messiah. So the point is, is that the real Messiah, Yeshua, who inspired the apostolic movement, lived and functioned within Judaism and presented and lived out the same ideas, these very same ideas. So the most Jewish thing that one can do is to believe the teachings in the apostolic writings, to believe in Yeshua the Messiah for the salvation of the soul, and to believe in God's Torah as a way of life. You know, this is what these things are revealing to us. Isn't that a fantastic thing? You know, the, the, the science that, that reveals to us that there is a creator God. And then the Hebrew text, the, the theological understandings, the underlying the hidden meanings of the text reveals to us that, yes, there is a creator God and he wants us to draw near to him. He wants us to believe in his Messiah for the salvation of our souls. That is the meaning of the scriptures. And so I hope you enjoyed this week's Science and Spirituality. If you have comments, please leave them in the, on the YouTube channel or you could send me an email. You can find them at mutsadi.com. Okay, thank you. Bye.